So now we've removed everything we don't need out of the smoke box and the boiler, and we've removed everything we don't need out of the fuel tank. So the next step is to actually start wiring the uh, receiver board, the booster, the switch, the low sound decoder, and the charging jack all into the fuel tank. So that's what we're going to do now. So this requires some pretty careful planning, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. and what, what I want to do is this comes off, this top piece. The, and so I, I'm going to mount the switch in here, and then when the engine's running, you can just put this back on and cover it up. So I think what we've decided to do so we don't have to build a lot of uh, structure inside to hold these boards is we're going to tape the booster with some double-sided foam tape to the top of the fuel tank. Right. And then I've marked a couple of locations, uh, one for the on-off switch uh -huh. and one for the charging jack. And these will be under the uh, oil bunker cover thing that is on the engine. So that would be this piece? Right. Now that, this... That goes over everything, right? right? So this isn't actually attached. I noticed it has some, some mounting things and there's some holes in here for screws, but it, it wasn't actually screwed down. Um, and that's fine because it seems to stay on okay without any attachment. So I think we're just going to leave that. In fact, I will probably have to cut off a couple of these because they're going to be in the way of the switch. Well, you wouldn't want that screwed in anyway because you want to have to... You want to right, I want it, it accessible. Yeah. If anything, I might put some Velcro on it or something at some point if it doesn't want to stay on. But... Um, Otherwise, it's probably fine the way it is. Yeah, so right now, really, then, is just the planning of how to fit all the components into the fuel box. Exactly, and then the other two boards will go on the floor of the engine on, on the deck. Okay, well, we'll do the one at a time. Right. So I've drilled a couple of holes, and this is the switch, and then the charging jack will go in this other hole, and this fits under this piece, so when it's on, you won't see anything. So... Even though that fits on pretty well, um, I'm going to cut off one of these posts where the switch is just for a little bit of additional room. Oh, so it'll fit a little better? Yeah. This is the charging jack that I use, um, and I've set it up with the center post, or the tip is positive, uh -huh. and the rest of it is negative. So I have used my uh, multimeter and determined that the black wire, which is negative, has to connect here, and the red wire has to connect on the other side. So now I just need to solder those together. All right, and now that's going to go to in, the in jack one. into the fuel bunker that you drilled out the hole for? Yes, it's going to go in the hole, and then these wires will connect to that four-pole double throw switch also. Right, that was the thing that we were looking at when we first started this on the paper. Right, so basically right now what, it, what we're going to start to do is to create what's on the wiring diagram physically. So because everything's going to be cramped and kind of tight in here, I'm going to go ahead and put some shrink tube around those solder connections. Right. Just to prevent any possibility of shorting. Okay, so I've wired, just like on the diagram, um, half the switch goes to the charging jack. And then the other half, these are the wires that will power the other boards, the uh, booster and the uh, receiver board. Uh -huh. This is the wire labeled BP that we determine we'll use for battery power. Oh, right. Going, BP, battery right, power. Right, because yeah. the battery's going to go in the water tank in the in, over the third truck. And we've determined that the gray wire is positive. So I need to, and I'm using red as positive here, so I need to put the gray wire to the red, to the red and the, the green wire to the black. And that'll go in the center lug. So basically what you're doing here is very carefully routing stuff based on the diagram. Right. And based on the other diagram that Trevor, that you have on your phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I've almost finished wiring the switch. This is the line that will be the battery power from the switch to the uh, other two boards, the receiver and the booster. Mm -hmm. This is the line that goes to the look sound. And this is the line that uh, will be from the booster output. So when this is switched to battery, the DCC signal will come from the DCC booster and then mm -hmm. go to the look sound. And what I need to do is connect the last set of lugs to the track power from the truck. So we have this uh, front pickup and middle pickup wires. So I need to gang these together and then wire them to the switch. I thought this was worth showing because I wanted to make sure people get to see the 
the way it looks when it's wired. Right. This is just the switch. The wiring on the switch is, is done. And there's still some wires that need to be connected to other things, but those are labeled, so I'll know where they go. Um, but at this point, I can go ahead and put the switch inside the bunker here and screw it down. Come through this hole like that. So I mounted the switch and the charging jack. And the way this is going to work is if I want to run it on outside power, which is the track, I push the switch toward the outside. If I want to run it on inside power, which is the battery, I push the switch this way toward the inside. And then the center is off and the engine is totally dead. And the other jack there is for the charging of the battery. Right. And the battery charger works when it's set to track power position. So it's track slash charge, and this then connects to the battery. If it's in off or switched to battery power, the charge jack goes nowhere. Okay, so this might look like a little bit of a mess, but the line that takes the battery power from the switch comes to this plug. And the polarity is important here, so this is marked plus and minus. Uh huh. So the red is plus and the black is minus. And there's two wires here, and that's because we need to send power both, both to this DCC board, which is what this plug is for, because it has this kind of a socket on it. It doesn't have screw terminals of its own for the input power. That's, that's why you need this piece. And then the converter also has um, a battery input, and that's over here. And that's, this has to be soldered. And this is also labeled plus and minus. So it's very important that the battery power be connected with the correct polarity. And then we'll just plug this here. And then the output from the converter goes into the DCC input on the booster. The booster is just basically like an amplifier. It's just taking the DCC signal and making it more powerful. And then the output from this is that wired goes to the decoder, right? Eventually, it's wired through the switch, but it will go th to the decoder through these wires here. And the decoder isn't in there yet. But what we're going to do now is, I think we're at the point where we could actually mount this board inside the engine, and we're just going to do that with some foam tape. That'll stick on anything now. Yeah. Sticky, so sticky. Just want to make sure we put it in the right spot because I have a feeling removing it wouldn't be so easy. Yeah, that stuff does not pull up well when you try to remove it and. When you try to pull that stuff up, you end up leaving most of the foam behind and like the sticky residue comes up yeah. and the actual sticking surface, but it rips in half and you're left with all the foam. <laughs> there it goes. Sounds like a mess. Yeah. Uh, actually. Actually, well, it did pull up, huh? Yeah. There, I think it's in now. The receiver and the Loxound uh, XL are going to get mounted down here somewhere. And so we need to wire the Loke sound up now. All right, so the first connection I'm gonna make to the Loke sound is the track power from the switch, which is either track or battery, depending on how the switch is set. The Loke sound XL, for some reason, has one track left and two track right connections. I'm not really sure why they did it that way. But anyway, just stick this in here. I'm putting red to the right. Just It doesn't really matter, but... What, what doesn't really matter? The polarity here doesn't really matter. Oh, so you, you're black, you go to left or right in this? Yeah, I'm, I'm oh. by convention, I'm putting the red to the right, but it, DCC polarity doesn't matter. Mm. So really, so um, anyway, they're just screw connections. You need a little flat, flat blade uh, screwdriver for these. So what is it then? The rest of this is just connecting the correct? Yeah, key, we gotta take all what? of this junk that's down here and then correct, uh, connect them to the appropriate spots on the decoder. I found something that's terribly convenient. Yeah, it just so happens, by pure coincidence, that the spacing of the screws for that mounting thing for the original light board that we took out are exactly the right distance for the Loke Sound Excel. Uh -huh. uh, so we just mounted the uh, Loke Sound Excel with these screws that were from that other piece. Nice. And it's the only thing is um, there's some little studs under here, so this, these aren't super tight because I don't want to crush anything on the board and potentially wreck it. But it, it's good enough to hold it in place while it's going down the track. Yeah, and something else to mention is that there's not really anywhere to mount the board to on the floor that's really convenient because this space here is actually open looking down to the truck. So it'd be kind of hard to mount the board there anyway. So those screw, terminal, those, uh, screw mounts are actually very convenient. What I have here is a quarter watt 820 ohm resistor, and this is what we're going to use for all the LEDs on the engine. 
I found that these work best with the Bachmann headlamps that come stock with the locomotive. So the first thing that we're going to do is unscrew the terminal uh, for the front light here. So that'll open it up then, right? Yeah, and the board is labeled as to what everything is. So we're going to make sure that it's open enough, and then the f next step is actually to cut the resistor back a little bit. So we're going to cut it to about there, and then just stick it into the terminal and screw down the terminal. So you're going to have to you're going to have a whole bunch of terminals sticking out or or resistors sticking out of that terminal then. Yeah, but we're just going to bend the resistors so they're out of the way of the back of the tender, so bend them up a little bit like that and mm -hmm. then we're going to eventually put string tubing over them to cover everything up once we're done. So now I'm going to shorten the lead to the other side of the resistor. And then I'm going to take the negative wire for the front headlight, which was labeled. Now the wire is stripped and tinned, so now the only thing we need to do is solder it onto the resistor. Something worth mentioning, too, that you can't see, well, you can see it's by uh, Trevor's knuckle there, is the heat shrink tubing that he put on that wire before soldering it. Right? Yeah, it's a little hard to put it on after you've soldered it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, so now you just slide the heat shrink tubing over and... Did you call it hint shrink? Heat shrink. I said hint shrink just now. <laughs> Would you like me to say that again then? No. I'm just laughing because it sounded funny. Okay. And, and then, then just shrink it down. Checking out that nice mess you got going there, Trevor. Yeah, it's, it's still kind of a mess. But the good news is we have all the lights hooked up. You can see all the resistors here coming from the function outputs. And then we have our one common output here for uh, the ash pan, the uh, uh, firebox, and the rear light. And then up here we have our common for the cab light and the uh, headlight. So the next step is to wire up the uh, motor leads. And then after that, we're going to wire up the uh, speaker. And then we can connect the power from the converter. And we should be done inside the fuel bunker. It looks a little messy, but everything's in the right places, hopefully. Yeah. Well, and the cool thing is all that crap tucks in under the, yeah. the bunker. So. Yeah, this will all be concealed. And the only thing that's... All, all the, everything's connected. All that we have left to do now is uh, stick this down someplace. And I think what we're going to do is... Uh, cut off one or both of these little studs here and just tape it down here with some double-sided foam tape. What are you going to use to cut those things? Uh, I have these uh, plastic uh, shears from Zeron. So I'm just going to pretty much flush cut some so I don't need to do any filing or anything. All right, now you just peel off the backing and find a nice little place for it to rest. That should be good about there. Does that mean it's time to try to fit all that stuff back on? Well, I think we're going to give it. Or? I think we're going to give it a little test first. Just yeah, we're to... going to we're going to move to the tender and do all the stuff in there, and then we can connect them and make sure it actually works before we close everything up. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the next yeah. step is actually to work on the tender. Uh, this is also just two screws, or on the back, kind of. So this is where the battery and speaker is that right. go in here? Right. Is that it or is there anything else that goes in there? Pretty much that's it. The, yeah, the only other thing that goes off. in there with the battery is the uh, fuse. It's got a yeah. little clips. Or... Yeah, you kind of have to there. work it off. There it goes. So what we got here is this is the circuit board where the plug from the engine plugs into. And these wires here these, the red and black go to the track power from the rear truck. The yellow and the green go to the motor on the rear truck. The blue and the yellow go to the backup light. And the green and the orange go to the speaker. And the speaker is mounted here where the perforation in the tender is. So one of the things I talked about earlier was that we weren't going to use the pickups on the uh, rear truck. And so what I mean by that is these wires coming to the pickups we're just not going to use. And it's because we're going to use that part of the plug for the power coming from the battery.
Oh, into the locomotive to power right. the motors that make Into it the locomotive okay, to power. Because we're not yeah. going to rely on the engine's track power for running the engine. We're yeah. more relying on it just for programming. Right. And so we don't need all three trucks to be picking up power. And it's easier to just route the original track power wires for the battery because then we don't have to put more plugs in between the tender and the engine. Right. What I have here is a 5 amp fuse and the corresponding fuse holder for it. What the fuse does is if the battery were to have a power surge or something were to happen inside the locomotive's tender where a wire crossed or something like that, the fuse would blow and cut off power from the battery. So basically it's an emergency cutoff. So if something were to go awry, the battery wouldn't catch on fire or something, or the yeah. locomotive wouldn't that blow would up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, well, that would be bad. Right. That would be really bad. It's <laughs> also protecting your motors and your decoder and yeah. everything else. Yeah, it's, so. it's protecting basically all the electronics you have inside yeah. the locomotive, and that is a good thing because I, I've had blo uh, boards blow before because of a lack of a fuse, so it's it's a good idea to use a fuse. And it's just a good thing for safety because, you know, you don't want batteries blowing up on you and things or catching on fire. That, that would be really bad so get a fuse because it's very important to be safe with the batteries even on model railroads safety comes first right yes okay so now i'm wired up the battery i have the uh, black lead connected to the old track black lead and the red lead connected to the old track red lead so that would have been right and left and i have the fuse wired up here to the battery with a uh, piece of shrink heat shrink tubing around the uh, wire from the fuse holder so now we're going to install the speaker. Okay. Also, I put a zip tie, a little small zip tie on these wires here to keep them uh, down so they don't vibrate against the speaker cone. Good idea. So I just ran it around these slots and then back up. Okay, so I found a way to get the speaker in with uh, all four clips. So now we're just going to put a bead of solder on the, uh, the little prongs on the speaker. That's not going anywhere. Nope, hopefully not. Well, the other thing is, once this is all sealed up, these wires should never really be disturbed by anything. Yeah. In theory. So the final step is to take one last piece of double stick tape and stick it down to this metal piece on the inside of the tender and that'll just keep the battery stuck down inside the tender peel off the top and then we'll take the battery and bud it up as close to be as we can to the speaker without actually having it touch the speaker so lay about there and then make sure it's relatively centered and just press it down and it should be pretty steady so now the last step is to put the uh, tender back on and just line up the clips and it should seat down and then we'll just turn it over and screw it back together. We're out on the patio Pacific here. Yeah, and there's dogs and trash cans and airplanes, airplanes and yeah. all kinds of wonderful noise, but what are you doing with it now? Well, because the studio is a little crowded, I brought uh, the engine out here so I could put it on a track and use my look programmer software to actually uh, load some sounds into the engine and it's also a little bit of a test now the look programmer doesn't have enough power to actually run the engine um, doesn't have enough amps but it, it will um, program it well let's let's so, uh, take a listen then yeah I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on Try the light. It's it's pretty loud, isn't it? Fairly loud. Okay. Now, I haven't tweaked anything yet. This is just the default Shea sound set that it has. So I need to adjust volumes and all, all that kind of good stuff, but at least it seems to be working. Right. So what would we have to do to actually make it move? Do you have to put up your, um, your hand controller? Or? Well, we either have to put it on a real DCC, uh, like my Digitrack system, or, or we can switch it to battery and try the battery. Oh. 
Well, maybe we should switch it to battery and try the battery. Yeah. We're still on the Patio Pacific here, and we've got everything put back together. And we're about to do the, the real moment of truth, but yeah. there's something else ahead of time. So, so this is the Airwire T5000, and this is what we're going to use to control the locomotive. One word of caution before you start running the locomotive, make sure you have the throttle on. Reason being is that the converter inside the locomotive, when there's no signal from the throttle, just sends straight DC signal to the loc sound decoder. And so if you don't have the, uh, I don't remember what CV it is, but the CV that uh, allows analog control set to uh, no analog control, then the engine will jump into full speed. So you want to make sure that you have the throttle on uh, before you start running the locomotive. So we have it set to frequency zero, which is the frequency the locomotive comes on, and set to address three, which is the address that all DCC decoders, or virtually all DCC decoders come with. All right, so this is the moment of truth. Take the fuel bunker off and flip the engine to the battery position. Okay. Uh-oh. There. That's what's supposed to be. Uh, prep truck isn't working. Oh, lovely. Yeah, we obviously need to fix something, but, uh... Troubleshooting time. Troubleshooting time, yeah. So we found the culprit. It's just this wire for the uh, front motor here that popped out. It's the motor negative, so we'll just strip it a little bit more because I don't think it was stripped enough. And then we should be good to go. So uh, before we put it all together, I'm going to go ahead and kind of test it again just right here on the table just, just to, make to make sure that what's messed up is actually working. Or what was messed up, hopefully, what is working. Yeah. So okay. it was the the front truck, right? Wasn't running before? Yeah. Right. So. Look at that, it works. Yeah. Awesome. So we can put it back together now, right? Yep. Okay, so I reconnected the wire inside the tender and I put the uh, fuel tank back on. So now it should be good to go. So let's just give it one more test. As, as you can see, there's no track at all here. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You've got action on the front truck. The yeah. Middle truck. It's all good. All the wheels are turning. I think we need to do guys I think we need to take this up to the Fern Creek in Western sometime and uh, give it a test run up there yeah yeah definitely okay I guess we'll see everybody there then okay so since we're here anyway thought it might be kind of cool to show some of these other things that we've talked about during the process of putting the batteries into Dan's so of course Dan's is the one on the far right the one on the far left is the number 10 that belongs here. That was the one that you based... Uh, what? Well, that was the one that I based a lot of the uh, strategies for the conversion in terms of mounting the battery, mounting the speaker, how to uh, track all the wires, the removal of the switches, and all that sort of thing. That was all based off of number 10. And um, I guess I'll talk about the engine in the middle a little bit. The engine in the middle is Fern Creek and Western number 4. It's not numbered right now, but it's uh, at least decal. But it's a uh, Bachmann Spectrum 040 side tank Porter locomotive. Um, that was the first battery conversion we ever did, um, the first one I ever did. And um, it has an air wire converter like Dan's, except it does not have the booster because it's a smaller locomotive. It's got a NCE uh, D408SR motor control board in it, and it's got a Phoenix P8 sound decoder in it with, I believe, dockside sounds is what they call it. Um, it's a nice little engine to switch with. It does really well moving cars around the yard, 
And it also is a testament to how far I have come in terms of doing battery conversions because it, uh, we'll just say this much, it's not perfect. And it took almost four months for me to figure out how to convert it because I didn't understand at that point that you need motor control boards with the converter or you know that the sound decoder was sound only and I didn't understand how you know the frequencies and receivers and transmitters work so it's a testament to how far things have come you know it took four four months to get that thing running and we got Dan Shea running within a day. It, is that why it's number four just out of curiosity? No it's number four just because a lot of the other numbers were taken up yeah I mean we have three number threes so <laughs> yeah we have the fern creek and western number three which is the two truck shay south pacific coast number three which is the 440 that's basically in every video of the fern creek and western seemingly that you guys have done i think it was the opening shot in the layout tour uh -huh. and then we have the climax number three which is the next battery conversion um, that's the next one we're going to do and that's going to be a challenging one because it doesn't have very much tender space and i don't want to do a trailer car I don't know if you can see it in the shot, but the Porter has a trailer car behind it right there. And that actually is what holds the battery. And I don't want to do that with the Climax, so I'm actually going to have to find a way to put the batteries inside the boiler. And that's going to be a whole new challenge, but it should be a lot of fun. It sounds like something we'll be catching up on sometime in the future at, on a future podcast segment or something like that. So. Absolutely. All right. This is it. We're going to... Oh, it sounds like they're, sounds like they're getting ready. For the, for the run by. <laughs> so, Dan, you ready? Yep. Yeah. All right, bring it through.